Let's notice this is a four way bridge. The plus has the red wire, the minus has the black wire. I'm going to run two yellow wires from the piezo disc and hook them up. to the to AC input for the diode. And you'll notice there's still nothing on the meter because I've shorted that capacitor. Now I'm removing that. You see the AC wire, the other AC wire. Why do I call them AC? Well, the piezo disc doesn't put out DC, it puts out some, an AC signal. And now I have in my hand a plastic chopstick. And let's just tap that. Well, gee, we have three volts. We have six. Uh, da, 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 da. Up we go. There's so let's get a little over ten. Pull the power. Now we've removed the only drain on that capacitor. So when we hook this back up, we should see a momentary well, 9 volts. There's some loss due to the air. But there is your very simple generator. And you put a bunch of these in parallel and have lots of people with chopsticks. And you'll be able to not only raise the voltage of this capacitor to any voltage you want, and even blow it up if you go over 50. But then when you add a battery, instead of voltage going up too high, it will sort of level off and pass current, minutiae of current, to the battery. And you have your power supply. I, I don't know how to make this simpler. That, there you go, and you see it discharging again because even that wonderful fluke has an internal impedance. The reason this works through the diodes is the, the disc piezoelectric disc can generate hundreds of volts and it is able to overcome the diode bridge which in any direction is only two diodes at a time and it is able to pass at a miniature amount of current to raise the voltage of that capacitor and diode bridge just makes sure that it is always in the same direction so we see a DC voltage. That's how it works.